This is a short video to look at the Mellotron M5000 HD app for iPad. I've owned this for a couple of years and I've used it for various things. Uh, for those who don't know, the Mellotron originally is a tape sampling machine which contains a tape under every key. There are several tracks on that tape um, and each of those tracks is a recording of a real instrument in it. What they've done with this app is to record that information and uh, play it back as samples. It's pretty true to the original Mellotron in that you only get 8 seconds per instrument or per key and then you have to uh, release it to let it reset so that's uh, quite an important part of playing an instrument like this. I'll take you around some of the controls. Um, at the top here you have volume, obviously volume, pitch, tone and ABC. Now, um, ABC selects the voice and if you look at the top three lines there you can see that I've got Mark II flutes, Mark II violins and female choir listed. If I press a key down that's flute that's the flute sound. If I adjust this to put it to position B, I should get the violins. That's Mark II violins. And if I put them halfway across, I'll actually get a mix of the two. So you can hear a little bit of the flute coming through there. This was something that the Moody Blues used a lot <coughs> when they used the Mark II Mellotron. So you can mix them together and that was a manual mixing just caused by the heads in the machine uh, being across the two tracks. If you had an old cassette player you'd quite often get leakage. If the thing was out of alignment you'd get leakage coming through from the other side of the tape. It's the same idea but you, they used that positively to mix things. Now some of the things this has that a real Mellotron doesn't have is this section here where you can actually add reverb. Um, now that's quite important because the Mellotron itself is, can be quite a dead sound. A little bit of reverb is what helps. Now in the early days of the Mellotron in rock music, um, the original Mark I, which there were very few made of, the Mark II was the one that uh, a lot of rock groups started to use. It had no line output on it so it had to be mic'd up or it had to have special adaptation done and one of the things that a lot of bands did was to put in an external reverb unit if you see any old film of the Moody Blues Mike Pinder has got a reverb unit and gain control sitting on the top of his Mellotron in a separate box it really does fill out the sound considerably so I'll take you through some of the instruments that are available here and uh, at the moment it's plugged into my radio, just a DAB radio, just to get a bit more volume. Hope you're hearing this okay. So if we look at Mark II flutes, I'm not really a keyboard player and this isn't a proper keyboard, but um, we'll have a little go. Uh, What I should explain about this is that this is a continuous keyboard and it's polyphonic. You can play more than one sound at a time, so you can play a chord. You can't do that on a Moog synthesizer or any of the early synthesizers that were around. That's one reason why the Mellotron continued in use uh, into the 80s. It was only when polyphonic synthesizers became common that the Mellotron really died out as an instrument. So it had a huge amount of advantage uh, to it. If I take you through some of the instruments, that's flute. Which works quite well. Clarinet. That's from the Mark II Mellotron. Oboe, which I think sounds a bit synthesised. Next one, tenor sax. This is actually one of the best 
uh, ones. Whoever they got to play for that sample was actually a very good sax player. So, Mark II Brass Ensemble. It's quite good if you want to do an orchestral stab type thing, because you could, if you mix it with the violins and the strings. Uh, trombone is a very good sample as well. So that's a very useful one there. Uh, Fender Rhodes electric piano. That's uh, quite a nice sample. The piano sample's not very good. Um, now these are actually taken from a real instrument rather than from the master tape, so they have a little bit of noise on them. Edgar Fruz used uh, Mellotron uh, piano sample quite a bit, which was quite remarkable because there is a delay when you press the button on a real Mellotron, so um, he was doing well to, to manage that. Anyway, uh, vibraphone. That's a nice sound. I'm not totally sure what this is. Um, it says on it, Watcher Mix. Now, I've got an expansion pack in here. And it's obviously... It's not far off that... It's got a bit of choir in there. Definitely a bit of strings. This is actually Chamberlain organ. I won't go into the, the whole situation with Chamberlain, but it's similar to Mellotron. So that's an organ sample. Huge, huge amounts of noise on that. I don't think I'd ever use that. This is an interesting one. This is actually a sample of a Moog synthesizer. But you can play it polyphonically. Couldn't do that on a real Moog modular. No way. So you can see that there's all sorts of all sorts of advantages to the system. Um, this is another orchestral mix, quite similar to that Watcher mix. Church organ is a sample of the St John's Wood uh, Parish Church, which is down the road from Abbey Road Studios. It's actually the best organ sample I've um, encountered on any of these apps. Uh, boys Choir. It's a real boys choir sampled. Eight Choir is an eight piece choir. You can build up a huge uh, choir with that. String section is, um, I think this is a Mark II sound. So rather than violins, it's got some additional strings in it. Um, cello is an interesting one because apparently when they recorded this, the cellist refused to play the low notes at high volume. He said it would damage his cello, so they got a bass player in to do the bottom end. So the top end's rather nice. And then you get you get that, which is uh, double bass. It's when you get down into these low notes. Um, and then we're back to Mark II flute. So that gives you an idea of what it's capable of doing. There's a space here for a fourth voice. Now, how that works is that you can mix the first three voices. The fourth voice, you can increase the level of it here in the mix. Only some of the expansion packs have got the fourth voice option in them. Um, the advantage of the fourth voice as well is that if you use a MIDI... Uh, interface plugged into the iPad, it 
allows you to run two keyboards. The first keyboard is voice A, B and C, like a conventional Mellotron. The second keyboard is voice D. So you could put, these are 39 key keyboards, you could put two 39 key um, MIDI keyboards side by side and create a double manual. So you could, in theory, have um, the bass instruments on the left hand side and um, the treble instruments on the right. Or you could have um, something on the left which allows you to play longer than 8 seconds by having the same voice on both sides. So that opens up all sorts of possibilities. There are a couple of other things in this app which are pad mode which allows you to save loops and um, memorise the settings here of the uh, voices. Uh, I haven't really used that, it's not really something that I do. The other thing is a strange visualiser which which produces this kind of display when you touch the keys. I don't know what that's for. Uh, but it does work. The sound output from it is uh, mono, but it's mono split across a stereo jack plug. So you have access to that. Um, I think you can output the sound across the USB maybe. I'm not totally sure. Uh, I've never actually tried that, but... Um, you have the option of putting MIDI interface and everything else full keyboard in there which would make a big difference. I don't know if it's velocity sensitive though uh, in its current version. Um, there's a lot of expansion packs available. You can buy the M300 um, pack for it I think which is quite a nice set of sounds and you can also get a complete set of Chamberlain sounds. Uh, they tend to be a little bit heavier than the Mellotron samples. They're very high quality um, instruments being played on, on some of the Chamberlain samples so um, they're worth looking into too. I hope you found that useful uh, and I'm glad the iPad has held up to this because it is faulty and occasionally it makes terrible noises, it's nothing to do with the app <laughs> it literally is uh, going to be replaced in the next few days it's a, this is an iPad 2 it's very very old and it's been uh, badly abused but uh, there we are, hope you enjoyed that and uh, of course, that's uh, uh, Strawberry Fields by the Beatles' is Mark II Flutes. Um, I hope you enjoy that. It's not a particularly expensive app, and uh, maybe you'll get it and you'll enjoy using it. Bye for now. OK, there's a couple of things I forgot to show you about the Mellotron app. First one is the 8 second um, length of note. Uh, we'll go for 8 seconds. and the note stops. This is because the original Mellotron had tapes that only ran 8 seconds on each note. So the way that you got around this, if you were playing a chord, what you would do, and it works in this app as well, is to lift a finger off, which resets it, which allows you to go much longer on a chord. And if you ever get to see a recording of Willie Wollstenholme from Barclay James Harvest playing his Mellotron, he was spidering across the keyboard like this, just gently lifting fingers occasionally. And with the reverb on, and a bit of delay and echo and stuff, you could actually cover it up quite well if you were playing two hands. That's the first thing. The other thing that I forgot to show you is up here. It's the pitch control. Pitch control. And I'll give you an example of that. Now, the history of the pitch control is that the Mark I and Mark II Mellotron used an AC-powered motor which relied on having a very accurate mains voltage put into it. And because the mains voltage would vary a little bit, you had to have a pitch control but a lot of people started to use that for doing those sort of effects. I would say that that is not as wide a pitch control as you get on a, an M400 Mellotron, so um, you're going to be a bit limited there as to what you can do. Um, 
I'm not sure what the range is like with an external keyboard, whether it changes at all. If you've got a pitch wheel on a MIDI keyboard, it will work with this. So there we go. Um, that's the last couple of bits. Hope you enjoyed this.